Next on the Broadway show, we're talking Tonys with some of this year's biggest and brightest nominated stars. Plus, welcome to the cell block. Olivia Holt is Broadway's newest Roxy Hart. And platinum pop star JoJo makes her Broadway debut as Satine in Moulin Rouge, the musical. I'm Tamsin Fidel, and this is The Broadway Show. If you're looking for the inside scoop on Broadway's biggest shows, well, you've come to the right place. It's The Broadway Show. I'm Tamsin Fidel. Welcome. The road to the Tony starts right now, Broadway's biggest night just weeks away, Sunday, June 11th. And some of the biggest stars on Tony night are right here, right now. Let's send it out now to Paul Wontorek. That's right, Tamsin. I got to celebrate 2023's excited class of Tony nominees at the Sopatel New York. Hey, Sean, welcome back to Broadway. Welcome hey, back to the Tony. You thank know, you. You're a two-timer now. Two-timer. You do so many things in your career, but I know Broadway means a lot to you. You were fantastic in Promises, Promises thank you, years thank ago. You. you got nominated. Thank you. yeah. You're back doing a much heavier play. You're really, yeah. you're not just singing show tunes with Kristen Chenoweth, you're, you're no. giving a performance. It's been a 20 year journey to get this thing from my dumb little head onto wow. the stage. And so it's extremely rewarding to stick with something and have this kind of outcome. When you do so many things in your career, yeah. what does the amount of time you give to Broadway? Well, you, right. you really have to like block out your calendar. I know, people don't quite understand like the rigorous schedule and what it takes to do it. But when I was a kid, I just thought like, Oh, if you could do a Broadway play, you were an actor. That meant you were an actor. Yeah. And so it was like, wow, I, 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 am I an actor? I guess I am, you know, you can't, it's surreal to, to absorb it. Welcome to the Tony Club. Thank you. Do you feel welcome to the club? I do. I mean, it's, I'm, I'm walking on clouds right now. This is a dream come true. Talk about that dream. Talk about where that dream started. I knew without a doubt at eight years old that I wanted to be an actress. It was um, some magazine, it was an um, awesome acting magazine, and it said, how to become an actor. And it was like this. <laughs> it's easy. Just read this. <laughs> Just read this. And I begged my mom and I mailed it in. I was so excited. And opening this like little, it was like a black and white. <laughs> like 10 page book on how to become an actor. I said, this is my dream right here. This is, <laughs> this little book is gonna get me to the job. You've done this before. Yes, once. Does it feel different this time? Do you feel more ready this time? Maybe for what you're getting into? Well, different, different in the same. I mean, I, I, you know, there are different pressures and challenges and skepticisms when you're not doing a new work. You're doing a show that has been beloved yeah. for as long as I've been alive. And so there is a different kind of expectation to get it right, to add something, to not mess it up. You have not screwed it up. You're fantastic at Sweeney Todd. Thank you I so think much. a lot of people, when you were cast, thought, sweet Josh Groban? What? <laughs> How's this going to work? Yeah. I, I always find that that little bit of skepticism is a, is a wonderful piece of sand in my oyster, you know, for the pearl. You know, it's like I, I really enjoy the challenge of not being exactly right on paper uh, because it forces, it, it gives you a freedom to think outside the box, sure. first of all. So I always find that the villain, the monster of the story, is always actually a little more interesting when you don't know that that's the bad guy when they walk into the room. And I wanted to lean into that aspect of it. And I also just wanted to sing the absolute ever-loving crap out of it. And I really wanted to just dive into the score in a way that I've never, you know, dove into anything else in my career. and. And, and and it just inspired me to work even harder. You've hosted the Tonys. I have. With several. It's fellow yes. nominees. Fellow Severus. nominee. The universe is weird. It all worked out. Yeah. You all came back as nominees this time. <laughs> That's so awesome. Uh, we were texting each other. We couldn't believe it. We'll be a little yeah. less pressure just going <laughs> as a nominee this year. I, there are different pressures, but yes. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Tony nominee for performing. I know. Past nominee for writing fantastic music. But how does it feel to... I feel like this maybe was the first dream. Yeah, I think in a way there's a different kind of sweetness about this experience because it it meant so much to me as a kid. The first records I listened to were cast album recordings. So to get to in my 40s, I'm 43, to be moving into this phase and to be welcomed in and invited in with such love is um, it's a great blessing. I feel like I was at the wrong party my whole life where I was like, oh, I was, uh, I just wish I would have been here the whole time. What's it like to have the show 
sort of in the rearview mirror, to be like, you know, looking back on the experience. When you're in the thick of it, yeah. it's one thing, and now you get to see Yaya and be Tony nominees together, and yeah. be like, remember that thing we did? That was good. <laughs> People liked it. Oh, remember that time I flubbed all my lines and you were there to catch me? Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, because it was a, it was a, it was, while it was exciting, it was very challenging. Yeah. And I mean, that show took a lot out of us. But now it's closed and, and you know, we did our 16 weeks and now we get to actually just celebrate and have fun and also just celebrating everybody else who's nominated. First time uh, uh, that four black men have ever yeah. been nominated in this category yeah. in Tony's history. So yeah. to see that shift and that change as well, it's just great, man. I'm, I'm just taking it all in. You are already a Tony winner for producing. Yes. You do all facets of the entertainment world here. Right, right. But this is your first acting nomination. It was great to receive an honor as a producer. Yeah. But it cannot compare to this. I did not know how special it was until my name was called. Something changed in me. Ben Platt, look at you, he's back, back in Tony world. Obviously you had a great moment with Dear Evan Hansen, which took you to a bunch of awards, including a Tony award. Um, this time I feel like might be different. Yeah, I mean, I think I, there's a lot of privileges of getting to do this for a second time. And, and I think, you know, I, I feel a lot more prepared to be present for it. I think when you're young, things go so quickly, and not that they don't now, but yeah. you know, you miss so many things because you're in your head so much, and um, it all kind of flies by. And so I think, if anything, I've just learned that these moments are few and far between, so you just got to really try to be on the ground while they're happening and, and take them in, and just feel really lucky. Jay, congratulations. Thank you so Tony much. Tony nominee. Ah. Finding the role, I mean, this is now a role that you will be associated with forever. This is gonna follow you around forever. Yeah. And it's a great, fabulous, yeah. personal role for that to be, right? Yeah, it's so special. I, even prior to the nomination, like there were moments I would be standing there top of act two, looking at the, the show drop, and I was like, there will be someone on a tour somewhere standing in this spot doing this one day. And that touches me in such a way uh, that I, I, I can't even put into words, truly. You know, this poster is a good reminder that the Tonys are in the Heights. It's an in the Heights just, poster, basically. I, just, I saw this and I, I was like, I had to do a, a double take. Poster? I, yeah, I was like, why are you going to name up here? I don't mind it, but no, but it's, uh, it's beautiful. And I'm, I can't wait to go back uptown, man. Like, it's going to be so much fun. We, uh, that neighborhood is going to turn out for us and we're going to turn out for the Heights and, and just turn it up too. It's going to be a good time. I just think the fact that we get to celebrate this community and what the work that we do is amazing. We wanted to um, send an enormous congratulations to the Tony-nominated Sweeney Todd. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, the cast of Sweeney Todd and Hamilton. Check it out. It's Ham for Sweeney. Hamilton's show before the show, Ham for Ham, just got revived in honor of their Tony-nominated neighbors, Sweeney Todd, the demon barber of Fleet Street. <laughs> Sweeney star and Tony nominee Josh Groban join Lynn Manuel Miranda and more for the special concert at the stage door. Lerner and Lowe's Camelot is up for five Tony Awards this year, including Best Musical Revival and Featured Actor in a Musical for Jordan Donica. Let's send it out to Charlie Cooper. All right, Jordan, we are literally walking you to work. Yes. Super excited to steal some of your time Aww. prior to show time. Uh, thank you, thank but you. But listen, I want to know how you're feeling right now as the show has opened up. You're obviously playing Lancelot and Camelot, and this is a revival of a classic. Did that come with a lot of pressure for you? You could say on one hand yes, on one hand no. I feel like I've been very blessed to 
be in a lot of situations that could be high pressure, but uh, it's kind of like what I love. It's the thrill of it. Um, I did My Fair Lady, I've done Phantom, I did Hamilton. Uh, so, you know, there's always big shoes to fill. You've been wanting to do this for forever since you were a kid. Do you, yeah. do you ever think about little you? All the time. Yeah. I'm still, you know, that's still me. Still little me. I know I look big, but I'm quite little on the inside. <laughs> quite a little boy. I'm literally living my childhood dreams. You know, the life of a nine-year-old. Yeah. And I'm very uh, lucky and blessed for sure. All right, so when I think about Camelot, I think about the fact that King Arthur was very philanthropic. He wanted to make the world better. Um, I'm wondering if there's any subject that is important to you that if you had the power to change things, what would it be? Well, one thing that I uh, do a lot of work for and with uh, is with the Innocence Project and uh, the Center for Wrongful Convictions out of Northwestern University. I can't let you leave without asking you about that sword fight yes. and preparation for that. Yeah. What did that look like? That's nuts. Yeah, just basically my first like three or four weeks of rehearsal was just fighting with bamboo sticks and learning from B.H. Barry and conditioning and lots of going to the gym to try to prepare because we're also on a rake stage, so trying to stay as healthy as possible up there. But it was a lot of, uh, a lot of play, literal yeah. play, just coming yeah. to work to be in a state of play. Yeah, awesome. Well, listen, we're here at the Vivian Beaumont yeah. Center Theater. Yes. And uh, we're going to let you go. We're going to let you go to work. Thank you. We're going to give you the it. chance to make magic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Goodbye. Chicago is now currently the longest running show on Broadway, and that's thanks in part to the show always reinventing itself. One great example, TV star Olivia Holt just made her Broadway debut. Joining the cell block is Roxy Hart, and she's this week's fresh face. Hey, it's Olivia Holt, and I play Roxy Hart in Chicago on Broadway. Broadway has always been a dream. I'm so beyond myself. I can't even believe that it's actually happening. It's been fun, it's been overwhelming, it's been exciting, it's been nerve wracking. My body is so sore, but I love all of it. I mean, there's been such an amazing list of women. I really love that every woman that has come in to play Roxy has put their own spin on it and put a little bit of their flavor in. And there's so much passion in this theater. And I feel like that is one thing that is always portrayed in every Roxy is like the passion is just fully electric. And I am very grateful to be in that world. I've looked up to the theater community for so long. That's how I was even interested in performing. I think the first production I ever did was Through the Looking Glass. I played Alice and that was like my first like big role and I was like, okay, I'm gonna do all of my homework. I was like maybe eight years old. I just knew I never wanted to stop. Theater is what kept me going as a kid, I think, and kept me curious and made me feel alive. I'm so excited for people to finally see me in a new light. I feel like the last few years I've really dedicated my acting choices to dramas and now I get to kind of incorporate a little bit of drama and comedy and all of the things that I love, theater, music, singing and dancing and I, you just kind of get to do it all on stage and I'm excited for people to experience me live and in person. The feeling of being on stage, there's no other feeling like it. This is The Broadway Show and we're back in just a few. Thanks for staying with us for this latest edition of The Broadway Show. Glad you're here. Tell me what you need. Platinum recording artist JoJo just made her Broadway debut, now starring as a teen in Moulin Rouge. Paul's here with the story. 
Jojo, you're on Broadway. You're in the Moulin Rouge. What is happening? You're on that swing every night? Yes. That was the craziest thing. The first night coming down yeah. on that swing, I'm like, I'm gonna die. <laughs> I'm gonna ruin it for everybody. Everyone's night is gonna end when this girl dies. But I was like, just so excited to, to make it through that first performance and then now I'm starting to like have fun, for real. Have fun, yes. yeah. I mean, because it's Broadway, it's Moulin Rouge, it's an amazing role, amazing songs you get to sing. I mean, yes. this is like a great, and you're a musical theater person. I am, yeah. yeah. It's a dream come true for me because I love theater, I love pop music, yeah. and it's just the perfect combination of all things. Right. I'm doing things that I've never done to, to have almost 20 years of professional experience under my belt and do, be doing things for the first time, that's something very exciting for me. Are you also excited to show off your voice in this way? I am. I'm singing from a totally different part of myself yeah. and I'm learning. Like this is an opportunity for me to take the, the stuff I've been studying with my vocal teacher and to put it into practice. I literally won't survive unless I learn to sing from a healthier place. When you're in the recording studio, you can blow your voice out, you can put mm -hmm. vocal fry on it, you can not breathe how you need to. You can't do that here. I love this musical because Nicole Kidman in the movie was a very different sateen. Sateen on stage has a different kind of strength and, and it's been so great watching so many amazing, powerful women play it. What do you love about her and what are you sort of uh, clicking in with about her? I love sateen, I really do. I admire her strength very much because she really has the whole Moulin Rouge on her back. Not only is she a showgirl and the main event at the Moulin Rouge, she closes the, the night, but she's also a sex worker. She's a courtesan, you know, and that's no easy work that she does yeah. by, you know, seeing how she needs to speak to a man, who she needs to be. She really is a chameleon. She can be any woman. I have respect for the choices that she's had to make in her life to take herself up from the streets and into, you know, the, the elephant, which is her dressing room at the Moulin Rouge. She's strong even when people think that she's being selfish in the choices she's making. She's trying to be selfless. She's trying to save her friends and family. And um, so I respect the performer that she is on and off the stage. The Broadway show is back in just a sec. Welcome back to the Broadway show. I'm Tamsin Fidel. Let's get back to it. Broadway's new farm to table fable, Shocked, is now nominated for nine Tony Awards, including Best Musical. Here's Beth Stevens with another edition of Building Broadway. Thanks, Tamsin. Writer Robert Horn is back on Broadway after winning a Tony Award for Tootsie. This time he's written Shocked, a corn fed musical comedy straight out of the heartland. I sat down with him at his Midtown apartment. Okay, let's start with the very important stuff. Okay. What's a nice Jewish New York boy like you doing in this twangy corn musical? With Nashville songwriters. With Nashville, so uh, what I'm doing here is having the time of my life. I am writing comedy and working with a creative team that has been a dream and watching audiences appreciate the humor and let it all go and just laugh every night. And that's what I'm doing. And I'm able to do that and still be a good New York Jewish boy. And I'm writing about corn. Right, you're writing about corn. <laughs> Literally who writing knew? about corn. Who knew? Although I, I used to eat cream corn growing up because my mom was not a cook. And so she used to open, we used to have a lot of canned foods. I lived on cream corn. Bring me back, how did you get started with this show and what was the original idea? What I wanted to sort of write about was the idea that if you don't open your heart to people who are different than you, you do not grow. And that's where corn came in. Because I knew I wanted to create a story about a town that had closed themselves off from the outside world. And I thought corn was great, that works perfectly. Because they were afraid that they would lose their way of life. I think there's so much, this fear of people are gonna come in and try to change what we believe. And I wanted to write a story about the different sides of that, not judge either one, but say it's not about trying to alter what you believe, but opening your heart to understanding that there are people who are different than you and we can all love each other. And this is one of the very few musicals that's not based on source material, not adapted from a movie. Of course you have done that. You did Tootsie and won a Tony Award. Yeah. But that must feel like freedom for you. I, I love it. Writing an original musical, it's scary. It's so scary because there is nothing on that page. You are starting with nothing, but it frees you up 
to try so many things. You can really say what it is in your heart that you want to say because you are not um, beholden to anything that came before it. So, are you sick of corn? I love corn. I'm so grateful for corn. There's so much corn humor in the show. It's a corny show in the most, I think, in the best of possible ways. No, I, I am grateful for corn. That's going to do it for us. Until next time, I'm Tamsin Fidel, and this is The Broadway Show.